last minute till the show. You are the stars and the world is watching you. By your presence, you send a message to every village, every city, every nation. A message of hope, a message of victory. The right, the right to play on any playing field, you have earned it. The right to study in any school, you have earned it. The right to hold a job, you have earned it. The right... Hey guys, I'm Tyler Martin. And I'm Morgan Martin. We're Unified Partners. You have four minutes till showtime. Play Unified! Hi, I'm Kim Britton. And I'm Jeff Moore. With the Panhandle Women's Foundation. And we proudly support Special Olympics. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors. I'm Jerry Keeter with Keeter's Meat Company of Tulia, Texas, and we're proud sponsors of the Texas Special Olympics. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors. Hello Amarillo, my name is Pace Bixler. I'm the General Manager at GMS or Ford Lincoln. Here in Amarillo, we are a proud sponsor of the Special Olympics this year. your one minute countdown for Breakfast with Champions. From all of us at News Channel 10, we support Special Olympics Texas. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors.
This is State Representative For Price, and good morning from your state capitol. My wife Karen and I want to thank you personally for joining us this morning for an amazing cause. We hope you learn more about this great organization, you're moved by the stories, and you feel in your heart to get involved. Thank you again for joining us this morning for the Special Olympics Breakfast of Champions. Please welcome my friend and colleague, State Representative Ken King. Thanks for throughout the great state of Texas from places like Austin to Amarillo to my hometown of Canada. People are watching this breakfast that benefits the Special Olympics. At this time, please welcome local business owner and state board member Christy Dyer as we ask for you to join us in a moment of prayer. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate you. If you will bow your heads in prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you so thankful for all of our community and for all of these leaders and these champions. And I just pray over each and every one of them that you continue to give them courage, strength, and wisdom as they go about uh, their lives within our community. That they seek out and find people to mentor and that mentors find them. Watch over each of us, give us grace, and please forgive us where we fail you. In your son's precious name, amen. Good morning, I'm U.S. Congressman Ronnie Jackson. Would you please join me and local athletes in the presentation of the colors at the War Memorial and the Pledge of Allegiance. For the United States of America. And to the Republic. In a sense. One nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors. Miguel Ontiveros. I'm the Chief of Police for the Dem Police Department and I support Special Olympics. I'm Sheriff Sal Rivera with the Capitan County Sheriff's Office and I support Special Olympics. I'm Corrections Officer David Stevens with the Capitan County Sheriff's Department and I support Special Olympics. I'm Corrections Officer Eric Rodriguez with the Capitan County Sheriff's Office and I support Special Olympics. I'm Lori Eos with the Capitan County Sheriff's Office and I support Special Olympics. I'm the Great County Sheriff Michael Ryan, and we're here to pass this torch. I am Colonel from uh, Jalen, Texas. What we'd like to do is pass this torch on to the Dumas Police Department Chief of Zenith. Chief Ray Resendez with the Dennis Police Department. I got Eddie Gonzalez with me. I'm 
On behalf of the Dumas Police Department, we'd like to support Special Olympics and all the athletes. I'm glad to pass the torch on to Chief Richburg from the Panther Police Department. Hi, I'm Chief Richburg from the Panther Police Department, a good friend. Cody Dyer, Pepper Tech, Widget Styling and Profiling, Limousine Riding, Jet Flying, Diamond Ring Wearing, Just Stealing, Wheeling Dealing, Son of a Gun. Staples of the law enforcement sports run is kicking off events with athletes by carrying the flame of hope. Today with me is the Amarillo Police Department Homicide. It's hard to explain the happiness in my heart when I get to see these athletes interacting and being included in these events that we get to attend. I'd now like to pass it over to Tim Martin, the President and CEO of Special Olympics. Good morning, Panhandle folks. I'm so excited to share my breakfast with you. What a great event we have today, and we want to thank so many individuals for all their hard work as we move forward with that. Um, but first of all, how about Jeb Hilton from Amarillo PD bringing in the torch, representing the law enforcement community that does so much and means so much to those of us at Special Olympics. They truly are the heroes for our athletes and for us every day in our communities. Also, you know, events like this don't happen by accident. So we want to take a moment to recognize the volunteers, the staff, and all of those that works hard behind to make sure that people had a chance to watch this and celebrate our athletes this morning. Also, our sponsor, um, Gene Messer, um, thank you so much for making this happen. You know, as we move forward um, in Special Olympics with the Unified Movement, Unified is so special to me because I had a great experience when I was in high school. In high school, I was that bad kid, the kid that was always in trouble, and through my behavior, ended up having to be a part of Special Olympics. Um, I did not go willingly. I always say I was sentenced, but I will tell you, that kid that was a bully, that kid that used to take advantage of making fun of everybody else that was different than him, learned a very valuable lesson at the hands of our great athletes at Special Olympics. I learned to respect the hidden abilities, the responsibility to make sure that everyone has a voice because those human beings, and especially one named Diana, changed who I was as a human being. Long before there was a label or a program or anything else called Unified, I was blessed to have the experience of meeting the wonderful athletes of Special Olympics. So as we move forward in our movement, inclusion is what we push for, making sure that every individual has the chance to reveal the greatness that lies within. And as we push for that initiative, we need all of you to make sure you're opening doors, opening eyes, and opening your arms to welcome everyone in our communities. It's a huge push for us, it should be for you, and I know that you'll get addicted once you get involved. So with that process, as we move forward, I want to introduce someone from KAMR, Cheryl Proctor, our reporter from Channel 4 that's going to make sure that you hear about an amazing Panhandle Unified team that consists of Colby Adams, Francie Chapman, and Riley McElroy. And here is their fabulous story. And please remember to live and play Unified. I was hoping to get friendships. Getting to know people and just getting to help everyone. And, and I have like something like my twin that helps me a lot. Just love the people. It's super fun to just get to know them. Like just not like always on the court, but like off the court. Just seeing like how the athletes grow. Um, I play like basketball and baseball and soccer. Um, they like to play with me for a while, a, a basketball, a baseball, this way. Are they any good at those sports? Yeah, they're just good, <laughs> good sports. Like, no matter what happens, um, the unified athletes are like still happy and competitive. 
but they always have a good mindset. Like when they're religious, they're always so happy and they work super hard. Don't be scared to do it. It just, it makes so many more relationships with people and you get to teach people and that just, I feel like that's really good. Um, I got involved because some of our friends invited us to come play. Um, so my cousins, one of them participates in the Special Olympics, and then my other cousin works at ADVO, so that's how he got me into it. Thanks, but what made you want to be in a unified pair? To help the unified athletes, like, grow in their daily lives. Um, not just to sit out and help them, but also to get to play on the court, because I feel like that grows with people more. And some people will play basketball, and that's it. Sometimes they ask like if it's harder to like teach them, but I said it just, it's actually, it's really fun just to get to teach them because you get to see how much they've grown. It's not just like in how much they've grown as a person with other kids just interacting with each other. Well, I feel like it's changed a lot. Like I knew a lot about like the special needs, um, like athletes and stuff like that. But like, I feel like since I've gotten into it, I've grown more as a person, I've got to know them, and it's, I'm way more comfortable. Some of them are hesitant to join, and they've like asked like, what is it, and how, like what you have to do in it, and I just told them, um, once you join, like you get into it, then it just keeps going in your What is it that you think that you've learned by being with Special Olympics, by being with the Unified Pair? Um, I learned like about people a lot. What do you think the athletes have taught you in the past year? To always have a smile on your face. Probably just to stay happy because in just because you lose some, like you worked your hardest, like it it just makes you they've taught me a lot just to like love life. Play right. It only takes once. Go to one of those events, and I don't care if you are four, or if you're 40, or you're 80, you're hooked. All you have to do is watch the joy in their faces. We started out, uh, Sue had some friends in Stratford, and uh, we were invited to one of their picnics. Like Ross said, as we went to all the different meets, we met a lot of different people. We have made a lot of friends. What's your favorite thing about Special Olympics? Oh yeah, me and new people. And you've met a lot of people, haven't you? I have. How have you seen Ross change over the, the 20 years that he's been with Special Olympics? He can, he's more outgoing to, to anybody. He's not afraid to visit with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a good way. I mean, it just, it's made him more confident. Sit down with him now and have a conversation. He understands what you're saying. Can talk right back to you. So he's made a whole, lot, a whole different person out of me. A lot of difference in me. How has COVID impacted? Because I know the Special Olympics, you guys are family. You guys are going everywhere together. How has COVID kind of impacted that for not only you guys, but, but for Ross and the other athletes? Well, I, think, I think it's just like anybody else, any other group, any other sports group any other family I, you know you're pretty well locked in and especially when you look at our special olympics population certainly they're an at-risk population their families are and so I, they miss their friends they miss their peer group we miss the families um, that's kind of the beauty of special olympics is it's not just the athletes it's the families because we have so much in common. You have a peer group. Probably just picking up the phone and calling the heads of our delegations, whether it be in Dumas, whether it be in Stratford, any of them and say, are we ready to go? Let's, let's do this. And then just the activities to, to get together. Because those, even those athletes, they don't just do the sports together. I mean, they celebrate birthdays together. They celebrate milestones together. And we see that the same way when he worked out at one of the supermarkets here in town. I mean, even the police department would come in and eat at the restaurant. And Ross was known as the ladies' man. No, <laughs> no. He was, he was, he was, he was, <laughs> that's, 
That's what they put on your tag. That's <laughs> what they put on my <laughs> tag. Ross, what are you hoping that you teach other people involved in Special Olympics, whether it's the other athletes or the other volunteers, the other families? What do you hope that you teach them? What do you want? What do the you value think? of love. The value of love. And what about your competition? Do you want to win? Yeah. You want to win, but if you don't win? Always try your best. There you go. For the Medford family, Special Olympics is more than a chance to get out, exercise, and learn new skills. We've had a, a community, sort of a family of friends and people we care about where we can grow up together and participate in common events uh, in, in a safe environment, one that's encouraging with people that care very much about us and and our children. It's a place that provides opportunities for everyone, no matter the circumstance. It wasn't always open for Aaron to participate uh, in activities through other organizations. And this is a place that was safe for her, that was organized to help her succeed. What's your favorite sport? Basketball. She's com uh, competed in swimming and she's competed in bowling and basketball and bocce and track. Besides sports, it also has provided families across the Panhandle with health opportunities through programs like Healthy Athletes to give athletes the medical care they deserve through free screenings. One in particular is called MedFest. A lot of our uh, intellectually disabled population has heart defects. Have, the older ones have high blood pressure just like uh, the majority of our uh, you know, neurotypical population, uh, diabetes and other things. And so it screens for the things that you're concerned about with that uh, individual. And we can then identify the people that do not currently have access to medical care or possibly to that cardiologist or to the specialist that they need to see. And we get them plugged in to those specialists. Dr. Medford says the goal is to clear the person so they can participate in sports, but also help educate those who might be treating them. From audiologists to optometrists to physicians and nurse practitioners and nurses and all the people that, are, that participate in all of the eight disciplines, to teach them skills of examining and dealing with and communicating with people with intellectual disabilities. She says Amarillo is one of the only places in Texas to have the Healthy Athletes program through Special Olympics. A lot of these people aren't even from Amarillo. That They're coming from events from Hereford and Panhandle and Dumas and Pampa. Some of them have a, a very limited access to these variety of specialists. And uh, in particular, um, they, I think that what Healthy Athletes has done for them is to get them plugged back in if they've, if they've missed out on medical care in areas they need. The screenings have even benefited Erin, who they say has truly missed Special Olympics this past year, like everyone else, unable to participate due to the pandemic. All she ever asks about anymore is, when is basketball? When do I get to play basketball? I didn't realize until over the about the last four to five months how much she really truly missed basketball, which was basketball season, and she I think knew she should be doing it. So it's it's really made an impact on her life. She loves it. She looks forward to it. It gives her community. It gives her her group of friends that she gets to hang out with, just where they get to spend some special time together doing what they love to do. Hey everybody, we're with Emerald National Bank. Uh, wanted to give a little shout out today to the Special Olympics and the Breakfast with Champions. A little bit about our experience. Hope you enjoy. I'm just uh, here talking about Special Olympics and how, how it means so much to the community. I know us four guys and uh, a couple others that couldn't be here helped out the last probably over 10 years. And just getting involved in the community and helping the, the golf tournament was the main thing that I did, and I really enjoyed that. I think it's a good uh, benefit to raise money for these athletes to keep them for uh, competing throughout the year in their events and competitions. And we need to raise money for these athletes um, in different aspects other than the golf tournament as well. Um, the golf tournament was fun because it's a long day. We get it there at you know, sunrise and there until the sun sets, but it's fun raising money and I know that we some of us got to play in it in the afternoon and watching those athletes help out and hit that drive on that first tee is, is just 
it's something special. I know that I've never had that much fun on the golf course. It's, it's fun to watch them. My name's Ross Macon. I've uh, been involved in Special Olympics uh, roughly 10 years, uh, also supported with the golf tournament. Uh, I think for me and the experience that I had was, uh, as Brock mentioned, just supporting the athletes. Um, I think it's important to give back. Um, you know, for me, uh, not necessarily monetarily, uh, which is great, but also your time. Uh, I think time is important to give back to. Uh, if you can uh, spare some time to support Special Olympics, uh, as we did uh, for those all those years, I think that's uh, a great way to give back. And again, to see the athletes and to see their success, uh, to see smiles on their face, get to compete in things that they love, uh, it brings joy to my heart. I'm Derek Skipworth, uh, also been with you know, Special Olympics for around 10 years or so. With the Raging Cajun, it was always so much fun to see the community come together to help support these kiddos. Uh, you know, at, at the time, I think there was a point that we had 64 different teams in, in the golf tournament, and as Brock said, it was a long day, but it was so much fun to watch everybody you know, come together and, and support these kids. So for 10 years, we really enjoyed it. You know, hope that everything fundraising-wise continues on. My name is Eric Schrader, and I was also involved in helping with the golf tournament over the years. And it was it was very rewarding for me to to see the athletes and to see all of our work come together, and and for the community to be there to support Special Olympics, and and uh, we appreciated that. We enjoyed that. Patty Ballou is a very decorated, very outspoken Special Olympics athlete. But when she first came to Amarillo, you would have never known it. Well, I was a shy girl and, you know, growing up and, you know, and um, I have three sisters. So after my parents passed away, I went back and forth with uh, my sisters. And then uh, I felt like it was time for me to grow more. So I went to Advo Companies and I participated in all 12 sports. You name it, she's competed in it. Volleyball, powerlifting, tennis, um, bocce, um, fly football. I think one of my favorite ones is powerlifting because you know you have power and you know you can lift weights and everybody's you know, looking at you like, come on, come on, you know, and. <laughs> Powerlifting took her to Seattle for the USA Games. Then she went on to participate in Abu Dhabi, where she earned multiple awards. She also went to the Dominican Republic to participate in tennis. She says Special Olympics opened up many doors for her and others. So the once shy girl is now an advocate for others. I think it's really, really important for other people outside of ADVO to uh, know what we're doing in the company and uh, uh, through Special Olympics, you know, to bring people together because they don't understand what circumstances that you're in and, you know, and somebody's disability and uh, what they can and cannot do, which that's normal. She began giving speeches through a program called Global Messenger to tell different organizations and schools about Special Olympics. I think uh, if a girl is all shy and, and you know, kind of, you know, isolated and stuff and, and they uh, learn how to be a global messenger and going through training, and I think that would be really good for them and their self-esteem. She's even been a voice for others in Washington and helped pass a few bills. Now she serves on the board of directors, speaking on behalf of thousands of other Special Olympic athletes in the state of Texas. What kind of example do you hope you're setting for others? Um, have a good role model and a positive person. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, you know, life, you know, throws you curveballs and stuff, but you know, y'all, you just get up and you just uh, dust yourself off and then you, you know, keep on going, you know. She hopes the pandemic will end soon so people can get back to normal and back to Special Olympics. I think it's very important to everybody because, you know, sometimes when you're, you know, sitting in your house by yourself, nothing to do, and you know, you see that in little kids too, you know, they don't understand and 
you know, sometimes they get depressed, which that's true, you know, little kids can get depressed, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to, to be more support and to help uh, each other through this time of need. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors. Hello, I'm Ryan Palmer, PGA Tour player from Amarillo, Texas. Very honored and proud to support the Special Olympics. You too can as well. With your donation and support, we not only support local sports programs, but we'll be supporting relationships like our unified pair, athletes like Francie, Rowley, and Kobe. With their support, we can provide free health screenings and changing lives like Patty Ballou's and many, many others. I wish these great athletes nothing but the best, and good luck to all at the Special Olympics. Dream big and have fun. Hello, Pampa, Texas. Zach Thomas here. I have to say, I am a proud 1992 Pampa High School graduate, and I'm honored to be asked to participate in the Special Olympics Breakfast with Champions. Sports has been very good to me, but sports is good for everybody, no matter their disability. Because there is greatness in every athlete, but it's up to you to find out what that greatness is. But it's up to us to help them get that same opportunity that you and I have had. So get out there, give, donate, give your time, volunteer to help out and give these special men, women, boys and girls the same opportunity. All the best to you all. God bless. The great state of Texas, it's John Rich. Grew up in Amarillo out there in West Texas, and I just want to give a big shout out to our Special Olympics of Texas and this virtual breakfast of champions. Uh, hey, big shout out to all the athletes. Good luck, boys and girls. You go get them. We sure are proud of you. God bless. Hi everybody, I'm Sergeant Carla Burr with the Amarillo, Texas Police Department. I just want to take a minute to say thank you to all the athletes, the coaches, the sponsors, and the LETR participants of the Breakfast for Champions. I especially want to thank the athletes. I know it's been a tough COVID year. You've had to stay inside. You haven't got to do much. You didn't get to do the summer games and all the other sports that you truly enjoy. So I'm hoping and praying that things are going to pick up. And I know you're going to the summer games this summer, and, and I'm just hoping that soon you guys can get out and kind of get back to a normal life. But thank you for everything that you guys have done to be patient during all of this. Thank you for staying joyous and thank you for staying cheerful. And um, I can't wait to see all of you again. I am David Secrets. I'm from Area 16, St. Force Point in Special Olympics, Texas. Hello, my name is Deidre Carver and I'm with Superior Health Plan. I'm also a volunteer with Special Olympics for over six years and part of the games management team. I just want to say thank you to our athletes, volunteers, LATR, fire department, sponsors, and surrounding Panhandle communities for joining our Breakfast with Champions. I hope you'll consider supporting Special Olympics. Thank you. And I'd like to tell you uh, thank you to all of our athletes out there, all of our volunteers, all the people that help with special Olympics, businesses, uh, the LETR that get out there and volunteer, do all the events with these kiddos. Hi guys, my name is Eugenia Gerges. I'm with Special Olympics College Cup of West Texas A&M University. We're super proud of you athletes and we also want to say thank you to our volunteers and sponsors and everyone who made this event possible. Go Buffs! Hi, I'm Paige. I live in Booker. I want to say thanks to the volunteers, coaches, sponsors, and ladies that help make special Olympics special. Thank you. This year's Breakfast of Champions is brought to you by these sponsors.